Om Ajnana Timaranda Sya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanye Na Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kalpa Tarupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhattavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading the Nectar of Devotion and we're up to chapter number 9 which is evidence regarding further devotional principles. And we are on the section which is headed Reciting Notable Prayers. So, Srila Prabhupada writes, According to great learned scholars, the whole Bhagavad Gita contains many authorized prayers. Especially the 11th chapter where Arjuna prays to the universal form of Krishna. Similarly, in the Gotamiya Tantra, all the verses are called prayers. Again, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are hundreds of prayers to Krishna. A devotee should select some of these prayers for his recitation. In the Skanda Purana, the glories of these prayers are stated. There it says that devotee whose tongues are always decorated with prayers to Lord Krishna are always given respect even by the great saintly persons and sages. And such devotees are actually worshipable by the demigods. So the Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters and, and there are 700 slokas in the whole Bhagavad Gita. So devotees, they often select some of these verses from the Bhagavad Gita and they will use them particularly in talking the message of Krishna Consciousness. 
บทสําคัญของพระพุทธกิจาสโลกสําคัญของพระพุทธกิจาเนี่ยมาพูดมาพูดเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวของคริสต์นาพระพุทธเจ้าบอกว่าในบทที่11ของบทที่Where Arjuna offers prayers to Krishna's universal form. พระพุทธเจ้าเนี่ยทรงจอดจงในบทที่สิบเอ็ดเกี่ยวกับอาจุนาเนี่ยทรงพยายามอยากจะเห็นรูปลักษณ์จักรวาลของกริชนา But there are many other verses which are spoken by Lord Krishna, which devotees also like to repeat. และสโลกอื่นๆที่เหล่าสาวกเนี่ยอยากจะอ่านอยากจะพูดถึงเกี่ยวกับกฤษณาเช่นกัน In the second chapter, Lord Krishna gives many verses describing the difference between the body and the soul. ในบทที่สองเนี่ยก็พูดถึงเรื่องเอวัตเรื่องร่างกายเรื่องวัตถุของเราเนี่ยแต่ร่างกายแต่ละระดับ And in the tenth chapter. Lord Krishna speaks the Chatur Sloki of the Bhagavad Gita, the four verses which summarize the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we have many, many prayers. ภาวนามากมายด้วยกัน In the first canto, chapter e we have the prayers by Queen Kunti. ในบทที่ในภาคหนึ่งบทที่แปดเนี่ยก็จะมีพระแม่กุนตีเนี่ยทรงกล่าวต่อพระแม่กฤษณ์ต่อกล่อกฤษณา And then in the second canto, you have the prayers of Sukadeva Goswami when he was asked to describe the creation. He first of all offered prayers. และภาคสองนะครับสุกเดวกุศลมีจะพูดถึงการปรากฏการของระบบจักรวาล Then in the in the in the tenth canto you have the prayers by the demigods to Lord Krishna in the womb of Devaki และภาคที่สิบนะครับเราเทวดาเนี่ยก็จะพูดถึงการตั้งครรภ์ของเดวาคิ And at the end of the tenth canto towards the end You have the prayers by the personified Vedas. And when you go through Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many different prayers offered by different great devotees. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there. ก็จะมีเหล่าสาวกมากมายที่ทรงภาวนาต่อกฤษณาเช่นกัน In the tenth canto, you have the Gopi Gita, which is the song of the gopis when they're in separation from Krishna. ในบทในภาคที่สิบเนี่ยก็มีเหล่าโกปีเนี่ยทรงภาวนาต่อกฤษณาเช่นกัน The Gopi Gita, Gopi Gita is very beautiful poetry, very beautiful Sanskrit poetry. And where the gopis sing about Lord Krishna. The gopis, they will sing about the Lord Krishna. 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 They will sing about the เราก็จะมารับฟังแล้วก็อ่านแล้วก็พยายามจะเข้าใจว่าเหล่าสาวกเนี่ยกำลังพูดถึงอะไรกันบ้าง Sometimes when we will go in Sankirtan, sometimes when we are doing Hari Nam Sankirtan, sometimes we l l also sing some of these songs. บางครั้งเนี่ยเราไปสังกิตันนะครับหรือว่าเราไปสวดมหามนที่อื่นๆเนี่ยเราก็จะเอาบทเพลงเนี่ยมา Uh, we will sing Krishna ya Vasudeva ya Deva ki Nanda na ya cha Nanda Gopal Komaraya Govinda ya namo namaha. 
and then we'll sing another song. We'll sing uh, Namo Pankaja Nabaya, Namo Pankaja Malane, Namo Pankaja Netraya, Namaste Pankajangraye. So those are two, this is two verses which are from the prayers of Queen Kunti when she's praying to Krishna. So devotees enjoy singing the glories of Krishna. So we're encouraged to also regularly recite these prayers. Just like the Shikshastikam prayers, we will recite regularly the Shikshastikam prayers which were sung by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in the morning, when we do Mongol Arti, we will sing the Guru Vastikam and we will sing Guru Vandanam. We will sing these songs glorifying the spiritual teacher. And we will sing the song to Tosi. When we do Tosi Arti, we sing the Tosi Song. So, all, by singing all of these songs, we can purify our mind and we can remember Krishna. So, sometimes devotees find it a lot of trouble in the beginning to learn these songs. You know, we're not familiar with the words and we don't know the meaning. And so especially, you know, the devotees from China, but not only devotees from China, devotees from all the countries, they find it difficult a bit, you know, it's not, the not, it's not easy for us in the beginning. But by practice, by practice every day singing and reciting every day regularly, then gradually we start to remember and we take more and more pleasure. So now we see devotees all over the world, they learn these songs and they can sing together and enjoy. And these are not ordinary songs, but these are also all prayers and glorification of Krishna. And by singing and by worshipping Krishna in this way, we are engaging in devotional service. All right, so we'll read a bit more. Prabhupada writes a bit more. He said, those who are less intelligent want to worship different demigods for some material gain rather than worship Krishna. 
ปกพระทรงกล่าวผู้ด้วยปัญญาต้องการบูชาเทวดามากมายเพื่อผลกําไรทางวัตถุแทนที่จะบูชาคริชนา But here it is stated that a devotee who is always engaged in offering prayers to Krishna is worshipable even by the demigods. แต่นาทีนี้ได้กล่าวไว้ว่าแม้เหล่าเทวดาเองยังบูชาสาวกผู้ถวายบทมนต์แด่องค์พระขวานเสมอสาวกผู้บริสุทธิ์ไม่มีอะไรจะขอจากเทวดา The pure devotees have nothing to ask from any demigod. สาวกผู้บริสุทธิ์ไม่มีอะไรทั้งนั้นที่จะขอจากเทวดา But the demigods, they are eager and anxious to offer prayers to the pure devotees. แต่ถ้าว่าเราเทวดาอยากจะถวายบทมนต์ให้กับให้สาวกผู้บริสุทธิ์ So we know there are many demigods, and people often worship these demigods to get material blessings. เราสาเรารู้ได้เรารู้ว่ามีเหล่าเทวดามากมายและถ้าเราขอต่อเหล่าเทวดาต่างๆเนี่ยเขาก็จะให้สัตามที่ But we should understand that the demigods can only give their blessings with the approval of Lord Krishna. เราเทวดาเนี่ยทรงมีทรงให้การขอบคุให้กับเราได้นะเพราะว่าอะไรเพราะเขาเนี่ยทรงมีความอิจฉาต่อ Krishna. So people may worship the demigods. But it's better if they will worship Krishna. ผู้คนอาจจะบูชาเหล่าเทวดาแต่ถ้าบูถ้าอยากจะให้ดีกว่านั้นก็ควรจะบูชา Krishna. And the 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 demigods they they offer their respect to the pure devotees. เหล่าเทวดาเนี่ยทรงให้ความรบความเคารพต่อ Because the demigods they have material desires, but the pure devotees have no material desires. เราเทวดาเนี่ยทรงมีความต้องการทางวัตถุเพราะสาวกผู้บริสุทธิ์ทรงไม่มีความต้องการทางวัตถุใดๆ But at the same time, the pure devotees they will also offer their respects to the demigods. และเช่นกันเหล่าสาวกผู้บริสุทธิ์ก็ทรงให้ความเคารพต่อเหล่าเทวดาเช่นกัน The pure devotees should be humble. They must be humble, otherwise they couldn't be pure devotees. สาวผู้บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยมีความอ่อนน้อมทำตนสูงไม่เช่นนั้นเนี่ยเขาจะไม่ไม่ได้แปลว่าไม่ได้ถือว่าเป็นสาวผู้บริสุทธิ์ All right, then read again. It probably says in the Narsimha Purana. It is stated, any person who comes before the deity of Lord Krishna and begins to chant ครับปมอะไรนะครับดอกไม้ที่หอมนะครับพอหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยแต่งตัวทุกอย่างเรียบร้อยแล้วเนี่ยเราก็จะทรงวิงวอนภาวนาต่อโกวินดา
So maybe you all know this song, how we sing Govindam Adipursham Tamaham Bhajamin. So this is this very famous, this uh, Govinda song is also a prayer to Krishna. There are many verses also in that Brahma Samhita which are similar. They all end with the line Govinda Madhi Pursham Tamaham Bajamin. They are all prayers offered by Lord Brahma. So it's very nice to learn these prayers and to recite them. And we can see here the benefit you get. That when we recite these prayers in front of the deities, then we get freed of sinful reactions. And when we get free of sinful reactions, then we're more qualified to go back to Godhead, to go to the spiritual world. All right. So then the next item, next item is about partaking of prasad. So everyone enjoys taking prasadam, everyone enjoys eating. So taking prasadam is also devotional service. So there's a statement in the Padma Purana. A person who honors the prasad and regularly eats it, not in not exactly in front of the deity, along with Charanamrita which is the water offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, which is mixed with seeds of the Tosi, then he immediately can achieve the results of the pious activities that are obtained through 10,000 performances of sacrificial rites. <laughs> เคลียร์และรับประทานประสาทเสมอไม่ใช่ต่อหน้าพระปฏิมาพร้อมดื่มจะรำจะรำนามมริตะนามที่ถวายให้แด่พระบาทรูปดอกบัวขององค์พระเ
โดยส่วนใหญ่แล้วเนี่ยเมื่อเราไปที่วัดเนี่ยก็จะมีพระปฏิมาครับทุกๆคนเนี่ยก็จะได้รับประสาทก่อนที่จะหล่อเสาหรือว่าผู้คนเนี่ยได้ขับบ้านไป so if you take that prasadam on we we take that we honor that that food it's not just eat but we honor it we take it with great respect because we know this food is from Krishna so it's, it's very powerful and it's very purifying and people should eat, take prasadam regularly means every day they should get prasadam and it said by taking the, this prasad you get the results of it's like performing 10,000 uh, sacrifices การทานประสาทเพียงครั้งเดียวนะครับก็เทียบเท่ากับการทำบุญการทำพิธีบูชาหนึ่งหมื่นครั้งทันทีอ so when we when you do a sacrifice you get a lot of benefit it's very purifying so similarly when you take prasadam it's very Powerful, very purifying. Right. The next item is about drinking charanamrita. So charanamrita. Is obtained in the morning while the the deity of Krishna is being washed before dressing. So, so the deity is bathed with water. Which is mixed with perfume and flowers. And the water which is collected from his bathing, that is collect they, they collect that water. That's very special water because it bathes the deity, and that water is then mixed with yogurt. น้ำไหลลงผ่านพระบาทรูปดอกบัวน้ำนี้เป็นน้ำที่พิเศษมากนะครับของพระองค์และนำมาผสมกับโยเกิร์ต So this way the charanamrita becomes very tasty. ชิมนี้ charanamrita เนี่ยก็ทำให้มีรสชาติที่อร่อยมาก So it has a very nice taste and it also has spiritual value, very great spiritual value. Yeah, because the water is mixed with the yogurt, and then they will put also a little honey or a little sugar there also to make it sweet. And there will be also many tosi leaves also in the water. So the system is after the devotee has seen the deities, then he will also take some charanamrita water. So it's described in the Padma Purana that even a person who has never been able to give in charity and who has never been able to perform a great sacrifice, 
But... ดังที่กล่าวโอเคก็เหตุดังที่กล่าวในปัตนาปุรานาว่าแม้แต่ผู้ไม่เคยทําบุญให้ทานมาเลยก็ไม่เคยทําบุญทําพิธีบูชายิ่งใหญ่มาเลย And is never been able to study the Vedas. And he's never been able to worship the Lord. So he has never done any pious activity. But if he simply takes some c h a r i n a m if he gets some c h a r i n a m r i t a and takes the c h a r i n a m r i t a he can be qualified to go into the spiritual world. แต่หากเพียงได้ดื่มจารนามริตาก็สามารถที่จะมีโอกาสมีสิทธิ์ที่จะกลับไปในอาณาจักรขององค์พระควานได้ So p r a b h a d explains where every temple where the deity is worshipped, they will have a big pot. Where the c h a r a n a m r i t a is kept. Shabbat s h a l o m นะครับก็จะเก็บรักษาอยู่ที่วัดเป็นประเพณีที่วัดจะเก็บจารนามริตาไว้ในหม้อใหญ่ So the devotees come to see the deity and they offer obeisances to the deity and then they will go and take c h a r a n a m r i t a เสาผู้มาเยี่ยมเยียนแสดงความเคารพต่อพระปฏิมาแล้วดื่มจารนามริตา And they will be given three drops. You get three drops of the charanamrita. ก็จะสามหยดนะครับในการดื่มจารนามริตา And the devotee should take that three drops and drink that drops, and they should feel very happy, and they should feel transcendental bliss. เมื่อเราสาวกเนี่ยได้ดื่มจารนามริตาสามหยดด้วยความยอมจำนนเราสาวก็จะมีความปลื้มปิติสุข We have a prayer which you may say. You like if you if you like you can also say this prayer when you take c h a r a n a m r i t a หากสาวกเนี่ยดื่มชารนามริตาเนี่ยเราก็จะมีการสวดภาวนาเช่นกันหากสาวกท่านใดชอบก็ไปส There's a prayer. It goes: Akala m r i t u h a r a n a m Sarva v y a d i v i n a s h n a m Vishnam p a d o d e k a m p i t v a Shirasham d a r y a m i a h a m The meaning is: After we've drank the water from the lotus feet of Vishnu. Complete, นะครับหลังจากที่ได้รับดื่มจารนามพระบาทรูปดอกบัวขององค์ชีวิชโนพระสงฆ์นะน้ำสงฆ์นะครับน้ำสงฆ์ที่อาบน้ำไม่พานาลานะครับก็สามารถที่จะชำระล้างความบาปทั้งหมดได้ and it takes away the chance of dying untimely และก็จะช่วยให้หลุดพ้นจากวัฏจักรแห่งการเกิด So I hold that water on my head. ได้โปรดนะครับมาอยู่ที่พระเอ่อในอยู่อยู่ที่บนศีรษะของของฉันด้วยเถิด So sometimes, you know, when devotee is sick, sometimes we will bring charanamrita for them, and we will give them the charanamrita to drink, and the charanamrita can help them to get better. บางครั้งเนี่ยสาวป่วยนะครับเราก็จะเอาจารนามริตาเนี่ยมาให้สาวกได้ดื่มแล้วให้สาวกเนี่ยหายไวๆ Alright and then the next item to smell the incense or flowers offered to the deity หัวข้อต่อไปการดมกลิ่นหอมของทูบและดอกไม้ที่ถวายให้กับพระปฏิมา So in the Hari Bhakti s u d o d a y a there's a statement about about the incense which is offered in the temple. In Hari Bhakti s u d o d a y a there's a statement about about the incense which is offered in the temple. In Hari Bhakti s u d o d a y a there's a statement about about the incense which is offered in the temple. When the devotee smells the flavor of the incense which is offered to the deities, then they 
they become cured of the poisonous effects of material contamination. And it's it described just like one becomes cured of a snake bite by smelling the medicinal medicinal herbs. So we have to understand how sometimes the devotee or a person may be bitten by a snake and the, the poison from the snake affects the body. And sometimes the people who is bitten by the snake, he will be bitten, he will go unconscious. But there are special herbs which grow in the jungle. So some people who are very expert, they know how to use this herb to bring the person back to consciousness. So they get the herb and they just bring the herb in front of the person who's unconscious, who got bitten by the snake. And just from the smell of the the, the herb in front of his nose, it can bring him back to life. So that in the temple, it's the same way. When the devotee comes to the temple, he just smells the incense offered to the deities and he get, can get cured of all this material contamination. So this is the power of going to the temple and just smelling the incense or smelling the flowers offered to the deity. And Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, when devotee comes to the temple, he should always offer something to the deity. He, he should offer some flowers or fruit or incense or something. So if he doesn't have any money, then he should try to offer something, whatever he can. And Prabhupada explains how in India, he said the system is all the men and ladies come to the, in the morning to visit the temple and they will bring something to offer. Somebody may bring just a handful of rice, uncooked rice grains. Somebody else may bring some vegetables that they grew in the garden. Bangtan 
vegetables. Puck. Good puck. Right? Yeah, they will offer the vegetables to the deity. And, and some people may bring some flowers which they gathered from the garden. And so even a little few grains of rice or some little flower can be offered to Krishna. And it does if you go to see the deity or if you go to see a saintly person, that's the same thing. That we, you should bring something to offer to them. So it doesn't matter what you bring. It can, offering can be very humble. Or it may be very valuable. <laughs> Some people draw pictures and they bring a beautiful picture of Krishna and offer it to the to the guru, offer it to the spiritual teacher. So a flower, a little fruit, a little water, whatever is off, whatever is possible, it should be offered to Krishna. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, a leaf, a flower, fruit or water. Krishna Songklaune Power Gita by Dogmai Nam Akhab Singlaunia Kosama Tawai Kap Krishna Da. So when the devotee comes in the mor to see the deity in the morning, he should he he should to smell the the incense offered to Krishna. And just by smelling the incense, he gets free of all the poison of material life. And then there's this another evidence as stated, and if the smell of the garland that was offered to the deity in the temple enters into a person's nostrils. Immediately, his bondage to sinful activities becomes taken away. And even if one doesn't have any sinful activities, but if he just smells the the flowers which are offered, he can make advancement. Just like one may be a Mayavadi, he may be an impersonalist, but he can become a devotee just by smelling the flowers. And there's an, the example about the four Kumaras, how they went to see, they went to the spiritual world, and initially they were impersonalists. So, 
but they went into the spiritual world and the Lord came there and then when the Lord came there and they smelt the flowers and the incense and the temple and they smelt the Tulsi from his lotus feet, then they became devotees. So, people who are impersonalists, they're not very pure, but they can become pure by contact with the flowers and the incense offered to Krishna. And then there's another statement in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It says, if one has not washed off all the reactions of sinful activities, he cannot be a pure devotee. The pure devotee has no doubts about the position of Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So because he has no doubts, he will engage fully in Krishna consciousness and do devotional service. And there's another statement also in the Agastya Samhita. It says, just to purify the impurities of our nostrils, we should try to smell the remnants of flowers offered to Krishna in the temple. So it, it's important to go to the temple and see the deities and to take part in the activities. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Master. So, going to the temple is an opportunity to smell the flowers and to smell the incense offered to Krishna. Some people don't understand the importance of going to the temple. And they, they miss the opportunity to get purification. And so Krishna Consciousness Movement is opening temples all, all over the world just to attract people to come and get purified. But this is Kali Yuga, people are very fallen. They don't want to get purified. They don't want to go to the temple. They'll go to cinema, they'll go to movie, they'll go to bar, they'll go to so many sinful places. 
พวกเขาอาจจะไปที่โรงหนังดูหนังไปผับไปบาร์หรือไปทําบางสิ่งบางอย่างแต่ว่าไม่อยากไปวัด We ask them to go to temple. Oh no, I have no time. If they ask, "Can you take me to the temple?" They will say, "No, I don't have time." So we try to make the temple attractive. We want to attract people to come to temple. We try to make the temple attractive. We want to attract people to come to temple. We try to make the temple attractive. We want to attract people to come to temple. We try to make the temple attractive. We want to attract people to come to temple. We try to make the temple attractive. We should understand human life is very special. We should understand that human life is very special. The animals they cannot come to the temple. 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 They have the opportunity to understand who we are. การที่เราได้รับร่างมนุษย์เนี่ยเราก็ควรจะเข้าใจว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นใครและเรามีหน้าที่อะไร We understand we're not the body, we're spirit souls. เราต้องเข้าใจว่าเราเป็นดวงวิญญาณเราไม่ใช่ร่างกายนี้ So we need to go to the temple. To go to see Krishna. But we must go to the temple to see Krishna. Some people, people say, "Oh, I want to see God. I want to see God." We tell them, "You go to the temple. You will see God. He's there in the temple." People are trying to say, "Oh, I want to see God. I want to see God. I want to see God." But the people are not going to go to the temple to see God. And then when they go to temple, they say, "Oh, it's only statue. It's not God." They do not see with love. They do not see with devotion. We have to understand Christ. God, God is everywhere. And he is also in the temple. And in the temple, he comes. He takes a special form in the form of the deity. And in the form of the deity, we are able to give service to him. เมื่อมีรูปลักษณ์ของพระปฏิมาเนี่ยเราก็จะรับใช้พระปฏิมา We will bathe him and dress him. เราก็จะอาบน้ำให้แต่งตัวให้ And we cook food and offer food for him. เราก็ทำกับข้าวและถวายอาหารให้กับพระองค์ And we offer the worship, offer the articles of worship like incense and lamp, ghee lamp. เราก็จะบูชา And we sing songs about his pastimes for his pleasure. We will sing songs about his pastimes for his pleasure. We will sing songs about his pastimes for his pleasure. And we enjoy also dancing for his pleasure. So going to the temple, we enjoy. Chanting and dancing. การที่เราไปวัดเนี่ยเราก็จะมีความสุขและเพิ่มเพินกับการเต้นลำ And then we hear about Krishna's pastimes and we hear about Krishna's teachings. เราฟังเรื่องราวลีลาของคริชนาฟังเกี่ยวกับคริชนากำลังที่จะสอน When I first became a A devotee, I start. I used to go to the temple every evening for the arti. And we used. I used to come every evening from my job. I was working in a job, and I would go to after the work. I would go to the temple 
to attend the evening arti and we would have kirtan, chanting and dancing. And the artists were always very ecstatic. And devotees would dance in ecstasy. And, and I would go every night. I started to go every night. And after the arti, then devotee would give class from the Bhagavad Gita. And we would hear the Bhagavad Gita, and then after Bhagavad Gita class, then they would distribute a little prasadam to everyone. So in this way, this was how I in, was introduced to Krishna consciousness. So it's very nice to come Everybody's encouraged to go to temple and chant and dance and take prasadam. Alright, so we will stop here tonight. Are there any questions? Okay, three person three people have raised their hands. All right, so who has the question? Vaishnavi? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances on Glory Shri Prasila Prabhupada. Uh, today we read about Charnamrita. Um, I have Gauranita deity, so I give them a bath every day. So I can also make Charnamrita oh. every day. Yes, you can. Yes. Yes, you should. You can make Charanamrita. And do you have Tosi also? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. So when you bathe the deity, you put the Tosi leaves in the water when you bathe the deities. So the deities also enjoy the Tosi leaves. Okay. Yeah. And then you, you don't use... You, 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 whatever water you use for bathing the deities, what do you do with the water? After you bathe the deities? I take a little bit and pour it for the plants. Yeah, good. The right. yeah. Ah. So you can take you can make charanamrita and you can also distribute to devotees if you like. Usually, you know, we'll make the charanamrita, we will add some yogurt and some little bit sugar or honey. Okay. Uh, so I can take little bit of water, maybe half cup of water and half cup of yogurt, something like that, right, yeah. Guru Maharaj? Yes, right, yeah. Okay. And uh, is there, a, they have to take bath before drinking Charnam, if I give to someone, they have to be, is there anything like that, Guru Maharaj? Who? The, the devotee? If I give, no, if I give to my family member, mm -hmm. They have to take bath before getting Charnamrita, honoring Charnamrita. No. Or not a problem. Okay. Prasadam, yes, can, prasadam can be taken anytime. Okay. 
There's a past okay. there's a past time that Lord Chaitanya came to the home of one person that in Jagannath Puri there was one person called Sarva Boma Bhattacharya. So Sarva Boma Bhatta Bhattacharya. Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya. So he was, previously he had been an impersonalist, but he had become a devotee. So one morning, early in the morning, after Mangalarti, Lord Chaitanya came and brought Mahaprasadam. And so Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya, he was just getting up from the bed. So Lord Chaitanya came and brought the Mahaprasad and gave to him. And Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya immediately ate it. So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased. Because Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya, he was a very high class Brahmana. So usually the Brahmanas, they're very conscious about things that they say, oh, I have to take bath, I have to clean my mouth, I have to clean my teeth and everything, I have to take bath and do my prayers, then after that, then only I can eat. But because Lord Chaitanya had brought the prasadam of Lord Jagannath, this is prasadam, so it's non different from Krishna, so immediately you should take it. You don't have to wait. You, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to take bath. You don't have to worry about all the. Just immediately take the pasada. Because this is the way of devotional service. And it's above all rules and regulations. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj, very clear. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Vaishnavi. Yes, and then there's another question here from Yuvati Sachi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, O Guru Shishiva Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, my question is about Srimad Bhagavatam. Can I ask? Yes, you can ask. Yes. Uh, this is Srimad Bhagavatam 1.7.4. Srila uh, Prabhupada uh, said in the report, devotional service or Bhakti Yoga is the function of the internal energy. Thus, there is no the inferior energy in the process of devotional service. We lost your voice. I lost your voice in part of this reading. Oh, sorry, Guru Maharaj. Mm. Uh, you... can I... Yes, can I repeat? Yeah, I think you have to. Uh, yes, uh -huh. uh, the, the purport, uh, devotional service or Bhakti Yoga is the function of the internal energy 
Thus, there is no place for the inferior energy or material energy. And my question is, uh, how does the internal energy displace the inferior energy in the devotional service? Well, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yogeshwari, Yogeshwar Prabhu. Yes, the, 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 the Jew. My, okay. Well, you have to understand that material energy is like darkness and the, the internal energy is like light. Mm. We, there's, they say in, in Bengali, there's the, the verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Surya Sama Maya Haya Andikar, Yahan Krishna Tahannahi Mayaya Andikar. That Krishna is like the sun and Maya is like darkness. So the Maya, that's the external energy, it's like darkness. And Krishna, that's the internal energy. So wherever there is light, there will be no darkness. Just like now is evening, and so the sun has gone down, so the darkness has come. But as soon as the sun comes up, then the night is over and the darkness is gone. So darkness is the absence of light. So the external energy, the maya, is there because there's no Krishna consciousness. But wherever Krishna comes, then the Maya will go. Can you understand, Yuvati? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Uh, Hare Krishna. My business is... Hare Krishna. All right. There's one more question here. Is it Shilpa Mataji has a question? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I have two questions. The first one being, when we are chanting and dancing in front of the deities, we feel some joy. Is that joy material or spiritual? Oh, that, that well, we, we hope it's spiritual. It should be spiritual. The question is, why are you feeling joy? Sometimes, you know, sometimes we have the example, you know, <laughs> Okay, yo, yo, Yogeshwara Prabhu, you can translate. ว่าเวลาเราเนี่ยอยู่ต่อหน้าพระปฏิมานะครับเราสวดมนต์วิงวอนเต้นรํานั่นคือความสุขที่ความปลื้มปิติสุขนั้นเนี่ยทรงเป
บางครั้งเนี่ยผู้คนเนี่ยทรงมาเยี่ยมเยียนวัดเต้นรำนะครับตอนนั้นพระปฏิมาแต่ว่าเขาอาจจะไม่ได้ทำไปเพื่อคริสต์นา Sometimes they 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 come in the bodily conception of life. อาจจะมาในในรูปแบบของวัตถุนิยม And they dance, you know, the way they would dance in a disco. พวกเขาเต้นลำเหมือนกับเต้นในพับ So that's not very transcendental. นั้นไม่ใช่การเต้นลำแบบทิพ But when we come to temple, we dance for Krishna. We have to, the consciousness should be there that I'm dancing for the pleasure of Krishna. ในขณะที่เรามาในวัดเราควรจะเต้นลำและเรามีความปิดใจจดจ่ออยู่ที่ Krishna เพื่อ Krishna. But just because they're coming to the temple, so they get some benefit. ต่อขณะที่เขาเนี่ยได้ยืนเยียนมาวัดเนี่ยเขาก็ยังก็เขาก็สามารถได้รับประโยชน์ได้เช่นกัน And because they are dancing, you know, they get they get some benefit. และเขาเต้นลำเช่นกันก็เขาอาจจะได้ประโยชน์เล็กเล็กน้อยน้อย It may not be pure devotion. ไม่ได้เป็นความรักที่บริสุทธิ์ But they they will get definitely the benefit of some pious activity. แต่ว่าการที่มาเต้นลำในวัดเนี่ยก็จะทำให้เป็นเขาจะได้ทำบุญทำในระดับความดี But we come to the temple, we should learn how to properly behave in the temple. หากเรามาเยี่ยมเยียนในวัดเนี่ยเราก็สวนที่จะมีความแสดงความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนความเคารพต่อสถานที่ Shri Lu Prabhupada showed us how we should dance. เชื่อว่าเนี่ยทรงแสดงให้เราเห็นว่าเราควรจะเต้นลำยังไง You know you put your hands up in the air like Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. ทรงยกมือนะครับเหมือนองค์เจตัญญาและองค์นิจันนด์ And then you move to the left and then to the right and then to the left and then to the right. และแกว่งแขนไปซ้ายขวาซ้ายขวา And this way back and forward in time with the chanting of Hare Krishna. และทรงเดินไปด้านหน้านะครับพร้อมกับการสวดภาวนา Hare Krishna. And we should look at the deities. We should focus our attention on the deity. และเราควรที่จะจดจ่ออยู่ที่พระปฏิมาและวิงวอนต่อพระปฏิมา And in this way we can feel. Transcendental pleasure. Sometimes, you know, we get the young boys come to the temple, and the young girls, and the young boys are attracted to the young girls. บางครั้งเราจะเห็นได้ในวัดเนี่ยก็จะมีเหล่าวัยรุ่นผู้ชายผู้หญิงเนี่ยทรงเดินเข้ามาก็จะสามารถทำให้ทั้งวัยรุ่นเนี่ยก็จะดึงดูดซึ่งกันและกันต่างเพศ And so this way sometimes it's not very transcendental สิ่งนี้ก็ไม่ใช่เป็นสิ่งที่ทิพนะครับความมั่งคง But still because it's in the temple because they've come to the temple and they're chanting and so there's some benefit there ต่อหากพวกเขาเนี่ยมาเยี่ยมเยียนในวัดก็จะมีผลประโยชน์บางสิ่งบางอย่างเช่นกัน And gradually, we learn how to properly behave in the temple. และพอเวลาผ่านไปเขาก็สามารถที่จะรู้ว่าเราควรจะให้ความเคารพต่อวัดยังไง So it it can be transcendental. It it's going to be different for different people. สามารถที่จะมาในระดับของความมั่งคงได้ขึ้นอยู่กับแต่ละบุคคล For those people who are really genuine devotees, serious devotees, it will be transcendental. หาสำหรับสาวกนะครับมีความจดจ่อตั้งใจนะครับต่อพระปฏิมาเนี่ยก็สามารถที่จะมาในระดับนั้นได้ And for those people who are very neophyte, 
then they will at least get material pious activities. All right, Chilpa. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. And I had another question. Is that okay? Do you have the time? Yes. On the material energy, we say she is inferior because she's unconscious. The elements are unconscious, not conscious. Okay. Um, and the, the living entity is superior because we are conscious. But the personification of material energy, is she conscious? I mean, is it is it the same? Is it the material energy is only of the elements and the false ego and all the things that we are studying right now in the third canto of Bhagavatam? Or is, is the person, like, because Maya Devi, we say Durga Devi, she's Maya Devi personified of material energy but she's a person so how do we understand that เราเราจะเข้าใจได้ไงนะครับว่าเอ่อมายาเดวีหรือว่าพลังงานเบื้องต่ําของพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีความเอ่อหวาดมีความกลัวต่อพระพุทธต
ของพระแม่ชีวะพระของพระชีวะ So she's she's conscious. Her her responsibility is over these material elements. หน้าที่การงานของพระแม่ดุลกาคือการที่ดูแลนะครับทาสสิ่งเหล่านี้ Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's very clear now. Thank you so much. Okay, Hare Krishna. Must be very early there. Um, it's about eight thirty in the morning here right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> other, it's a good time. <laughs> other side of the world, yeah. And your voice, yeah, is, this... voice is very clear. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and the sun is just coming up, and it's the the day is just beginning here. <laughs> oh, okay. We have another question here from Kumadaki Maharaji. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Hari Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, actually, mine is not a question. I just wanted to check with you something. Uh, the Evolve Puna team they sent an email. They told me to you regarding the. Sharing. Yeah. I uh, just want. I uh, wanted to check with you, Guru Maharaj. Did you receive it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, so they just wanted to know. Um, I mean the confirmation, and they also wanted to know if they have to send you like a reminder or something on Saturday. Is it necessary, Guru Maharaj? No. No. Oh. All right. Okay then. I'll just inform them. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Now Padma has a question. Is it Padma? Hare no? Krishna, Guru. Yeah. Yes. Hare Krishna, Guru. Please accept my humble obeisance at your lotus feet. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. I have two quick, uh, two quick uh, questions, Guru. One is um, when you offer bhoga to Krishna. Can we sometimes offer these dry manjuris when they become brown? Offer mango leaves. No, dry manjari, manjari, tulsi. Oh, manjari. dry manjari, dry manjari. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay, and the other question is, Guru Dev. Now, in uh, in some places in the book, they say Vaikuntha. Sometimes they mention Kingdom of Godhead. Is there any difference between these two? Mm, not really, no. It could be the same thing. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering whether there's a difference, so that's why I just wanted to clarify. Kingdom of God. It could be Vaikuntha. It could also be Goloka. Okay. Right. But uh, kingdom of yes. kingdom of God is more. In, we don't know if they're talking about Goloka Vrindavan or if they're talking about Vaikuntha. But anyway, it's, both are the kingdom of God. But, okay. uh, but if they say it could be Mathura. It could be Mathura Dwarka any place, also. Yeah, well, by uh, Mathura Dwarka, they're also more within the realm of Vaikuntha. Okay, thank you, Guru Dev. Understood. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. 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 อาโลกทิพย์เนี่ยทรงรวมกันเหมารวมนะครับไม่ว่าอดอร์กาหรือว่าวินดาวันก็ทรงอยู่ในโลกทิพย์เช่นกันนะครับโอเค so there are no more questions I don't see is there any more questions no uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj I have one question can I ask okay 
Uh, Gurunaj, with regards to Charna Amrita, right? Uh, I'm actually wondering, like, um, you know, like um, something with the regards to Sri Devi Mataji's question in the other class, like, um, you know, when we actually come across animals who are like, um, you know, sometimes we rescue them or when they are in trouble and everything. So it happens in, in my place as well. So what we do is like we give them Charna Amrita, the Abhishek water, and then um, say the Mahamantra a little, and then we set them free to their fate. So I'm just wondering... Uh, what exactly would the effect be for these animals when they actually receive this, um, like Charnamrita and the, you know, like Ma Mantra and everything? What kind of um, uh, uh, relief they will get actually? What kind of animals are these? Cats, basically. No. Like uh, uh -huh. kittens. And, I mean, like, you know, the stray kittens, the mother leaves them and they are like sometimes on the verge of death or we can't take care of them. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we just give them the things and then we set them free in the the, the taman, I mean the, the the garden there. So uh, I'm, I'm just like wondering what exactly, uh, you know, what happened to them. Well, it gives them the opportunity in the future they may get a human body quicker. Then, then in the next life, they may have the opportunity to get a human birth and may even get get birth which connects them to devotional service. Okay. Uh, Guru Maharaj, and then I wanted to ask, like, uh, you know this pastime where Ramanujacharya gave um, prasadam to the fish and they developed like the forearm form, right? Um, that happened because of the potency of Ramanujacharya, is it? Is it? Uh, when he gave the prasadam? Well, uh, it may have been the prasada also. It could be the prasadam because the, that's very important that you have the pure prasadam, which is cooked by pure devotees and offered by pure devotees, the cooks and the priests who offer, that they were pure. Then the prasadam is very powerful. All right, Guru Thank you so much. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yogeshwara, were you able to follow that? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, I'm going to ask you, when we are in the world, we are going to ask you, 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 ไอ้สัตว์เนี่ยได้ดื่มเนี่ยเอ่อเขาจะเขาจะได้รับร่างที่ดีกว่าไหมหรือว่าเขาจะบาปของเขาจะช้าล้างหรือเปล่านะครับ